Hello everyone, this is Adam Charrington and today's video will not only benefit those who have left church and are struggling with depression but also anyone else who might be going through depression. Some woman once asked if I could do a video on this because she had left a satanic illuminati megachurch maybe Hillsong, Bethel or Elevation, I don't know or one of the many others perhaps they seem to be running rife these days as they attempt to deceive even the elect. But a little news flash for you guys. The elect get out. Anyway, I'm going to be going through seven recovery steps for those who did and need to know how to deal with this ultimate betrayal from their church's leaders. Bear in mind I'm no medical expert on this but I can relate to those saved Christians who got out because I went through the exact same thing. I know the heartbreak you're going through and this is what I found worked. Step 1. Don't go back. First and foremost, absolutely do not go back. This is the most important thing you can do. The Holy Spirit or lack of guided you out of there because you knew that place was wrong it's the wrong gathering and you know what that means so once again you absolutely do not go back because you will perish that we know step two stay clean try as best as possible to stay clean and holy during this time don't resort to pharmaceuticals because you're depressed or drink or any other narcotics and avoid the attitude of going carte blanche because God let evil reign in his so-called church. You might have a very good point there, I know I certainly felt like that, but this attitude will be a problem later on and eventually you may need to account for some of your behaviour because you can no longer keep using that fallen church as an excuse for backsliding. Although it is a very good excuse. Incidentally, these churches will be held accountable for much of that as well, and ruining the lives of the best of us, those who got out. Step 3. No bed. Don't stay up late and get out of bed early. From experience, bed is the worst place for depression. You've got to force yourself up and get out. I once saw a Navy SEAL on YouTube say, why wouldn't you get up at half four in the morning? From ten o'clock onwards, you're not really doing anything. You're messing around on your phone for several hours and just wasting time. And he's right. And the longer you stay up at night, the more depressed you will feel because it's naturally darker, quieter, and more gloomy, etc. It's just not the right time to be awake, especially if you're struggling with depression. Some would argue neither is half four, and I probably agree with them. I used to get up at that time when I was lifeguarding for the swim school that had to be in the pool at quarter past five, and getting up at that time is still very gloomy and really not good for your depression. You'll also begin to feel tired sooner, which is why I think a decent compromise is six. Six in the morning is when the sun's coming out and you're still getting a good enough head start to the day. It also allows you to get past dinner time before beginning to feel lethargic. Now you're ready to sleep at just the right time. 10 to 11 o'clock because staying up beyond that isn't good if you're going through depression you'll already be starting to feel depressed by 12 so I recommend bed by 10 or 11 and up at 6 the perfect compromise and biological clock that ensures you get up and go to bed at just the right times Additionally, sticking to this routine gives you approximately 7 to 8 hours of sleep every night, meaning you don't need to take lay-ins at the weekends and can make more use of your time. 
Remember, folks, bed is the worst place for depression. You want to get your biological clock right and you need to get motivated. Which leads me to the next really important step. Step four, train. Now, I won't say that this is the next most important step, but it's definitely the next step you need to do first to get yourself strong again. And it will greatly improve whatever it is you choose to do in life. Get in the gym and train hard. Some of my greatest videos and writing were following a good workout in the gym the night before. And it has to be one of the best ways of tackling depression head on, if not the best way. You need to get motivated again if you're going through depression and spend a good three hours in the gym every time you go. This will make you feel better not only from the workout but simply being there among other people working out. And then once you're fighting fit again, it's time to move on to the more important step. Step five, find purpose. Probably the biggest cause of depression in most people is a feeling of lack of purpose. This can flip depression on its head once found. So find something worth doing something that will improve yourself and others and immerse yourself in it. Despite idolatry being top of the list of commandments, unfortunately it seems like human nature to find one thing you really like doing or are good at and become completely devoted to it. Which isn't necessarily idolatry if you don't obsess over it. Which will bring me to step six in a moment. So, if devoting that much time and effort to something, shouldn't it be towards all that is godly for maximum results? What does that mean? That means reading the Bible, performing good deeds and finding some godly purpose before Satan has a chance to find some other distraction now you are more vulnerable. Step 6. Rest. Take a break or you will go crazy. This is one of the commandments even, and essential when committed to your newfound cause. And if you don't rest, you will eventually do something you regret. It's very important not to burn out by making sure you rest. Step 7. Pray. Finally, the most important of all these steps is prayer. No more ecstatic worship services means you now need to find your own way of reaching out to God. And prayer is the best way of doing that. This last one is an ongoing thing. You should be doing it right now and every day because it's going to be difficult after leaving church to make that contact you once had during the worship services because you can't worship like that anymore okay that was the most devastating thing I would say when when I left um, that inability to to worship okay that is very important um, but that's a sacrifice we all have to make uh, when these churches uh, begin falling and, and you have to leave. It's not the end of the world, folks, okay? It isn't necessary, okay, uh, to worship like that. You can uh, make up for it by praying a lot and also uh, reading your Bibles, okay? And perhaps you can even find your own way of worshipping God without uh, the church's involvement there. Hopefully you can, okay? I, I haven't yet, because I've thrown out all of the, the music as well. Uh, some of you may have seen that video where I, I trashed all the, the Hillsong CDs and DVDs. But I think one of the main ways I've been able to get over this is with this ministry that I'm doing now. I'm still able uh, to remain uh, committed to God 
um, with the work that I'm doing through this channel. So I think that's really helped for me. But I, I feel for the rest of you who, who don't have this and uh, are, are trying desperately to uh, to get back into worshipping God and um, get over this depression from leaving. Yeah, I, I feel for you guys and I hope these steps help you. Uh, I I think one probably okay. I ain't gonna lie to you. I think training was uh, the biggest one that worked for me. Actually, uh, getting in the gym it helps with everything. All right, it made big improvements in my life when when I went uh, back in the gym and I was just training hard. You know. Because that then spurs you on to do everything else. That's what gives you the motivation, okay? Um, if you're struggling with depression because you've had to leave church, get in the gym, okay? It will really help. And, and that goes for anyone going through depression, all right? Get in the gym. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I, once again, I really hope this helps. Uh, I, I think it's worked for me. Yeah. And uh Yeah, I still struggle with it at times, but I I'm over I'm over a lot of it. Alright. Uh it still angers me what Hillsong have done, but I I've gotten over it. Yeah. And and this is how I've done that. So for that woman who wanted to know how she can overcome her depression of leaving church. Uh, well, you might want to consider following these steps. Yeah? Number one, don't go back. Okay? Uh, that's probably the most important. You cannot go back. Okay? You know what? You know what it means if you do. Alright? It's really not wise. Really not a good idea. Uh, step two, stay clean. Okay. Try as best as possible to stay clean, even though you're not going to church anymore um, and you're angry uh, with, with the church. Number three, no bed. Bed is the worst place for depression from experience. Okay, you've got to get up and out. All right. Uh, and the best place to go, yeah, once you get up out of bed, is the gym. Step four, train hard. Step five, try and find a purpose, okay, find something worth doing, all right. Uh, preferably that is of God, yeah. Uh, step six, rest. Once you've found that thing that you, you have a keen interest in, make sure you take breaks okay uh because otherwise you'll do something you regret or you know i've seen people that just like work constantly like don't don't take and they go weird all right <laughs> they're weird <laughs> it is one of the commandments to rest that is very important and of course step seven uh pray pray to god because you're not worshiping anymore you need to pray more and this, you should be doing this all the time, okay? Uh, that's probably the most important. Step seven, pray. Although training uh, will really give you the motivation you need and, uh, and get you back on your feet again. Okay. There you go, guys. Uh, take care. God bless. And I hope to see you soon.